Yo, yo, what's going on? It's your man, Stick Guy Travels. And we're here today with another cigar review. I'm back in the saddle. Took a little minute off. Took a little hiatus to handle some business and get some things going on some other fronts. But uh, first off, I want to start by saying I appreciate all y'all that's still rocking with me. And I appreciate all y'all that started rocking with me while I was out. That's dope to know that you can have that kind of impact where people still value your opinion, man. And I intend to keep on giving that to y'all. And, you know, here we are. So without further ado today, I have the Grand Toro from Culture Cigar Club. Let's get this out of the wrapper. So this cigar was made in the Dominican Republic. The veiny caramel wrapper right there. It's looking like great construction already. Smells good. Um, but yeah, it was made in the Dominican Republic. And as far as the specs on it, uh, it's a 54 ring gauge, five and three quarters in length. And it's a Corojo wrapper, a Sumatra binder, and an undisclosed filler. Um, my guy over at Culture Cigar Club sent this to me a little while back, and um, I've been, I had the, the, um, the Black Knight. The Black Knight was lit, I enjoyed that. Um, I can't wait to get into this one right here, man. Um, without further ado, Let's get it split, lit, and see what we're working with. Now, I don't know about where y'all are at in the world, but it's starting to cool down down south. It's my favorite time of year, though. You know, it's like 70 degrees out, not too chilly, just right. And uh, it's my time of year. Now, I can already tell by the construction on this cigar, man, that it's, it's, it's packed well. It's not underfilled in any kind of way. Um, that's always a good starting out. That's always good starting out, man, because I hate on the field cigars. It makes for a terrible smoking experience. You spend most of your time touching up and, you know, just touching up more than enjoying the cigar. Now, as y'all know, in the beginning here, I like to give it about maybe an inch down into the cigar to let the flavors marry. Let them get together and kind of all get to know each other. It's almost like when you baking chicken and then you put that barbecue sauce on it. Now you ain't gonna put the barbecue sauce on it and bite it right then. You wanna put the barbecue sauce on, you gonna sit it back in the oven or back on the grill, what have you. And once you do that, you gonna let that barbecue sauce and that chicken just, you know what I'm saying, all over each other. Then, once you get that perfect, what you can see, what you can use to see visually, once you get that perfect thickness on that sauce, you know it's all blended together. Now it's time to take a bite. It's the same way with cigars. You don't judge nothing from first firing it up. You know, you can do, some people do cold draw, some people do, you know, uh, smell the foot, you know. You can't you can't go that in depth with it. I used to do cold draws, but I don't much anymore because I feel like that's kind of gone once you fire the cigar up, and you're gonna spend more time with the cigar fired up than you are sitting there and drawing it cold. So it's just like mm, I get it, but yeah. anyway. I'm 
getting a little bit of vanilla spice off the top of this already. Um, wow, smooth, subtle. A little airy on the finish. A lot of smoke though, a lot of smoke. The retro hell is amazing. It's smooth, uh, doesn't burn at all. Very, very, very nice, very nice. Now I'm starting to get some cedar, a little bit of spice almond. Yeah, cedar spice almond still got that vanilla note, the vanilla note on the uh, on the palate on the finish. As you can see, the construction is doing well. Not having any issues out of it. So these flavors of merit, man, and uh, shout out to my guy over at Cuts Cigar Club too, man. I know we 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 both had had some stuff going on where we couldn't get these things out as quick as we wanted to, but you know having patience with each other that's that's all about business, man. And I appreciate you on having patience with me on my end, and 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 you know not forgetting about me once you got finished with what you got, you know what you had going on. So you know. It's all about being solid relationships, man. That's what it's all about. Very, very smooth light. Smooth light smoke right here. I wouldn't necessarily say that it's completely mild, but it hits that mark right between mild and medium. It's almost a medium but a little bit more than mild. So it's like, depending on, um, depending on how you take your draw, depends on how much punch you're gonna get. But with that being said, I'm gonna finish this first third. And I'll holler at y'all on down into the second third. Yo, I just had to bounce back in and show y'all the beauty of the construction on this cigar, man. Look at that. I mean, we've been stacking dimes since I lit this thing up. Still smoking good. Still getting a lot of that vanilla flavor on the back tones. Seat up front, I'm getting a little bit of leather now. Man. <laughs> Construction is the key, man. That's the key to your flavor. That's the key to, to all kind of consistency, any kind of transitions. It's going to come through construction. That's lit. I'm not sure what factory this is made at. I have to get more information on that. But man, this right here is 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 noteworthy. And the cigar has done nothing but gotten better. You know. I'm probably gonna go ahead and ash it here. Cause I don't wanna get dusty. But uh Yeah, it's done nothing but gotten better, man. I mean that Sumatra, that Sumatra binder is giving it, you know, like a sweet undertone. It's almost like, kind of like those red plums we used to get when we was little, by the train tracks off the trees out of somebody's yard or whatever. I don't know, it may just be a down south thing, but I hope y'all had them plums everywhere, but you know, I know we had them here. And um, so kind of like a red plum sweetness now that I've gotten down to this point in the cigar, the smoke is thicker. Uh, 
a lot more flavor nice transition into that sweetness too you know it, it, it went from the vanilla in the beginning to like the plum now so it's got almost like a slight tanginess to it but it's still sweet so i'm loving that i'm loving that the flavors on this thing is is, is amazing but like i say the smoke texture smoke texture is it's thicker now um than it was it was kind of airy in the beginning but it filled itself out Still getting a little bit of leather on that retro hell. It's weird though, cause it's got kind of like a cedar mixture to it too. But one thing that I love about the cigar is one of the transitions that took place is when it went from airy to a more thicker texture, it's also a creamier cigar now. So even though it lost the vanilla and picked up the red plum, it's it's got a creamier a creamier texture to it now and I'm loving that you know definitely getting some almonds in there still mild still mild you know what I mean uh, it, 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 it's, it's weird because it was in between mild and medium but as the smoke texture stepped up you know, the strength level kind of took a back seat and it got smoother. So it's mild in a good way. But on a big draw, you can still get those those medium uh, those medium hints in there. So definitely, I think it's safe to say at this point it's mild to medium. creaminess of that smoke texture rolls off your tongue. A little bit of coffee bean kicking in there now, the red plum kind of taking a, a back seat, but it's still there. Again, like I said, that's probably the sweetness of having that little bit of Sumatra mixed up in there. Uh, loving it, man. I'll get back with y'all in a minute and give y'all my final thoughts. <sighs> Coaches of God Club, y'all winning right now, bro. Now we off into the final third of this cigar, man. The construction is still immaculate. I haven't had any issues with it. Haven't had to touch it up not one time. I expected that from the way I was getting that ass from the beginning. Yeah, it's been nothing but a beautiful smoke. Still getting that pleasant sweetness, red plum sweetness. The retro hell has a little bit more bite now. Just a little bit of, just a little bit of punch there. But that's what I expect from all cigars when they get down to this size, man. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things. But it's a good thing though because now I've got like a pistachio type deal going on on the palate mixed in with that sweetness so it's kind of like almost like a bit of sweet that's coming together to make the perfect combination for a finish this cigar is an immaculate cigar uh put together here by culture cigar club and i recommend it definitely man uh to beginners and also aficionados that are looking for something a little bit smoother after dinner or if you're just kicking it and you know or if you've been you know on the maduros real heavy if you've been on the the, the, uh, the broad leaves real heavy or something like that, you look for something to kind of lighten the paddle up a little bit, man. Definitely, definitely a good mild and medium smoke right here to kind of bring you back around. Uh, I'm going to give this cigar a magna cum laude. For those of y'all that don't know, my uh, grading scale is honorable mention, magna cum laude, summa cum laude. Thinking about making some changes to that though, man, because of the crazy amount of underwhelming cigars I've smoked this year. It's been a wild year for cigars, man. Up and down, everybody got an LE, most of them trash, some of them great, and it's, it's just been wild, so yeah. 
I'm thinking about changing that grade scale up a little bit. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Should I change it? Or should I leave it the same? Because, I mean, you know, it's getting to that point now to where everybody is not able to make a good cigar. I've always said every cigar is good, but that was a testament to the people that are putting their strength in with rolling at the factories, putting their time in, you know, that's eating, eating off of this and, and, and you know, the families that's being fed. So it's always been kind of like an overall general testament to that and what the industry provides for those people. Not necessarily to the actual cigar. But I think after this year, it's time to start talking to the actual cigar and brand owners because it's like, I don't know what's going on, but it's been a wild year, man. It's been a wild year. And a lot of y'all just, mm -mm. The Culture Cigar Club, y'all scored on this one, man. This is, this is a great cigar, man. And I'm looking for great things from y'all out of the future. Um, shout out to y'all for sending this over to me. Um, I really appreciate it. I enjoyed it. Um, there's a couple others in this line too. Let me see here. One is the the, the Dark Knight, which I smoked initially. Um, and on that dark night, it's a uh, 50 by 5 Robusto. It's got a Havana 2000 wrapper, Indonesian binder, and undisclosed filler. And there's also the Mellow, which is a 52 by 6. It's got a Connecticut wrapper, and undisclosed binder and filler. So yeah, man, Culture Cigar Club, definitely check them out. Highly recommend it, man, most definitely. But uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that in another segment as far as like the grade scale and what's going on in the industry with these cigars, man. Um, but until then, I appreciate y'all rocking and I'll see y'all on the next one, man.